And now, a math lesson. Let's say the Zaxby's chicken finger plate comes with four, five, or six hand-breaded fingers and one side of Zax sauce. Plus, you can try them with Zax sauce, honey mustard, hot honey mustard, tongue torch, teriyaki, wimpy, nuclear, barbecue, ranch, sweet and spicy, and same. How many possible combinations does that make? Carry the two with the remainder... Uh, a lot. Zaxby's chicken finger plate. The sauceabilities are endless. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunchavandy and Corey Clark. Wake up. What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, proudly presented by Zaxby's indescribably good Check out our good friends all around the Tallahassee area, all the major roads in the capital city of the third largest state in our beautiful union. It's probably got his Axby's on it. Appalachie, Mahan, Monroe, Cap Circle, Southwest. Get you some. Also, maybe use a promo code. Join the fam. Warchant 30. 30 for days of access to Warchant.com, your ultimate semi sports source. Everybody on YouTube, hello. What's going on? Thumbs up, please. Little thumb icon, click it in the up direction. And you folks on your fancy schmancy uh, iPhones with your seven cameras on the back, if you could just give us a five-star review, we would appreciate it. We being myself, I'm Corey Clark, senior, comma, lead writer for the website aforementioned in the podcast intro. Corey Clark, what's up, man? What's up, buddy? How are you doing? You doing all right? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. Uh, I'm trying to make this a quick one. As we record this, I want to get, get some little Alamo Bowl action in my life. Wasn't able to... Uh, wasn't sure. able to really marinate in the cheese bowl as much as I wanted to, the cheese it bowl, because the hoops game. And then now we got to talk about the hoops game, maybe some other odds and ends around Florida State and uh, things of that nature. And then I want to get the Alamo Bowl, little little horns and buffaloes. Takes me back to uh, to the 90s, you know, right. old old Big 8 action. Absolutely. And I liked it. Uh, it's crazy seeing like a bowl game where a team is four and one in it. Yeah. Like yeah. they've just played five. I mean, that's just nuts. I think they said the Miami – who they play? Miami, Oklahoma State was the only ranked bowl game outside the New Year's Six, and obviously the playoff. So hey, my, I thought Miami showed a showed a little fight. I don't know. In, what, in the cheese bowl, going right? on. Did you have two TVs going on? I saw the first half before the basketball game started, and no, I, I didn't was see switching Derek back and King forth. Go, I didn't see Derek King go down, but uh, I mean, yeah, they, they fought back. Look, like they're going to get boat raced, right? They're like down twenty-one zero, but. Uh, Never underestimate the heart of a champion. Oh, wait. Never won the ACC. Right. So. Another, another three-loss season for the Canes. Yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, Let's see here. I have a feel like I'm about football. I'm really resenting basketball right now, cut into my football watching time. And on top of that, they lost 77-67. Uh, to 18th-ranked Knowles fall on the road against Clemson. Uh, first half, bit of a sloppy one. Uh, started off pretty ugly. Florida State ended off uh, the first half quite nicely. Got off to a pretty good start in the second half as well. I think they're up at they're up nine points at uh, at, at one juncture in the game, uh, but ultimately I don't know turnovers doomed them. I guess you want to say. Uh, I think just the lack of cohesion on offense maybe leads to the turnovers, which then led to the 77-67 loss. What was your takeaway, Corey? Yeah, I mean, and this isn't a, a gripe at the officials because the oh, officials didn't cost on. Florida State the game. Uh, but when you when one team shoots thirty three free throws Ooh. and another team shoots nine, a large number. you're you're not going to win that game. Um, Quite the discrepancy. You know, uh, well, some of the discrepancy. Was, I mean, look, some of them were just there were probably three or four where like Scotty Barnes gets called for a foul where he didn't touch the kid. He literally was trying to get out of the way because he had three fouls, and he knows Hamilton's not going to play him a four, so he backs out of the way. The kid jumps sideways into him, throws up a crazy shot. They call a foul. He has to go sit for six minutes. And that's when the game was decided with him on the bench, which is too bad. But, you know, the other three fouls, I'm not saying those, those were bad calls. That was a pivotal call. Um, but mainly, you know, the 33 free throws that Clemson shot was, was ridiculous. But so was only shooting nine. And I, there weren't a lot of plays where you watch that game or like, man, Florida, that was a foul. Florida State really attacked the basket hard, just didn't get a foul call there. They just don't, they don't. They they shot they just shoot a bunch of jumpers and when they're not hitting it's going to be ugly you know Raquan Gray was 0 of five from three Malik Osborne was 0 for three from three so you have your two power forwards 0 of eight from three and they're wide open and if they're going to be the guys that are going to take that shot you got to hit some 
just to keep people honest. And if you make one or two, then they come out on you and you might be able to drive to the basket. But if you're not going to make those shots, but you're going to keep shooting them, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be rough, but, um, look, man, it's, it's, I, I think it's just, you know, Leonard said, said, said as much after the game that he might, he might even switch his defense a little bit. Like he basically said that, um, that they're going to have to probably go away from switching everything like the screens. They can't have their big guys matched up on small guards because small guards are always, always, always just going to drive to the basket because they know they're going to get a foul call. And he goes last year, it was funny. He goes last year, we, they wouldn't do that. He goes this year, he goes, opposing offenses are complete. Opposing teams are completely junking their offenses against us. They're not running anything that they normally run. They're completely junking it and just attacking the goal last year. That didn't happen. They couldn't do that against those guys, but those guys aren't here anymore. Talk, talking about the dudes he lost from last year's team. So it's a, it's a work in progress, as Leonard Hamilton likes to say. It wasn't, you know, I thought they played hard. There was just a stretch there where it got away from them uh, midway through the second half. Um, took some bad shots. Calhoun took some really rough shots. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, that's just, you know, but that's just part of growing up. That's part of growing up and, you know, um, Maybe when, when things are going against you and the other team's on a run, is not the time to shoot a 27-footer, um, maybe. Um, or throw up something wild. Uh, I think Raekwon Evans threw up an air ball from the, from the corner. Uh, just, just a lot of, you know, when you lose a game, there's always 30 things you can count on uh, or point to. I would say, you know, you can't start a game where your first 10 possessions are six turnovers and four missed shots. I mean, they turned it over their first four possessions. They had six turnovers in five minutes, I think. I mean, that's just, you can't do that. You've got to start better. And I wonder if he'll change his starting lineup because of that, because this group ain't getting it done. And I know he doesn't care who starts a game, um, and he never has, but you're always starting in a hole, and you're always starting out of sync because this collect collective group typically isn't getting it done to start a game. They're good players. They might be your best players. But together to start a game, they're not giving you much. I don't know if these both bleed into each other, but I just thought the just the way that Florida State was not able to control the rebounds on the defensive end yeah. was really disappointing, really surprising. Uh, and that, I guess, maybe goes to, you know, you talking about these opposing teams kind of junking their offense. Is it because they know Florida State's not a good rebounding team? Is Florida State not a good rebounding team because Devin and Cabin Gelly are gone? I mean, is it hard to sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, quantify just how important those guys were on the defensive end in terms of altering shots and just making things more difficult for a team trying to get to the bucket. Well, and also just being athletes, like there were going to be seven or nine rebounds a game that Patrick Williams or Devin Vassell were just going to grab you that, uh, and Trent Forrest was a good rebounding guard too. Uh, you just got to work harder at it. You know, Barnes, I think Barnes needs to be a better rebounder. I know he's playing a different position and he's a point guard now. But, you know, I, I, he's, he's averaging about four rebounds a game. That should be six or seven, I think. Um, but, yeah, because MJ is not going to rebound a lot. Um, so it'd be nice if Barnes got on the glass a little bit. But, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, part of that, too, it, it Leonard said they were shooting, you know, Clemson was shooting a bunch of threes and missing them, and they were long rebounds. And it wasn't, not all of them, of the 19 offensive rebounds, I would say half of them were probably on three-pointers. But not all of them. And he's like, I was disappointed that, Sometimes guys were just pulling down rebounds in crowds. And that, you know, that has to change. I just, yeah, I think, I, I don't know what they're going to do with Balsa. He has some nice moments, but overall he's been kind of a net negative for them um, on both sides of the court, really. Um, and he's just, you know, he's getting kind of bullied a little bit underneath and, and they're giving up some, they're giving up some rebounds underneath. But yeah, it was all of it, man. The turnovers, I think they had 17 or 18. You give up 19 offensive rebounds. You uh, get out shot at the free throw line, thirty-three to nine. Yeah, that's a good recipe to lose anywhere. Not just on the road, not just to any. I mean, to anywhere, to any any one. Uh, when you get when there's those that big a discrepancy in those three areas, you're not going to win a lot of games. But I do think Clemson's a good team. I mean, I don't think that's a terrible loss. Um, it's just a you know they had a chance. They gave themselves a chance. The bench came in and Wilkes hit some threes. Evans had a nice first half. They gave themselves a chance, and then there was that stretch from about ten minutes to seven minutes where they lost the game. And they lost the game without Barnes because he had four fouls and Walker and Polite on the court. So that was that was kind of a bummer. Just got away from them. The, the, you know, the under eight timeout, it didn't come until like 6.20 was left. And by that time, Clemson was up six when it had been a tie game because, you know, Raekwon, Raekwon wanted to come out of the game. He was tugging on his jersey, but Leonard didn't want to, 
use the timeout. And then he immediately gets the ball stolen from him and they get more free throws because he had to foul. So that was, that was probably where the game was decided. And once, once Clemson saw a few shots go down, they got hot and they hit a bunch of jump shots and a bunch of threes, but as, that's the ACC. It's life in the ACC as long. That's right. That's right. A uh, good save, by the way, for your guy. Yeah, Cap McGillie's been gone. He's been in L.A. for over a year, Aslan. Figure it out. Uh, we knew who you meant, buddy. Yeah. We knew who you meant. Yeah, one, of the, one of the sixth men. <laughs> yeah. One of the lottery, lottery yeah. six men. Uh, Florida State back in action Saturday, January 2nd. Duke, 8 p.m. Is Duke, is that, that just what the doctor ordered, the elixir? Duke? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure about that. I mean, they'll definitely. Uh, Florida State will come out and play hard, but I don't. Yeah. I don't think that's ever been an issue. Um, I'm just genuinely curious what they're going to do uh, defensively because he hates switching. He hate or he hates switching defenses. Um, but I mean, I think he's seen enough now where they give they give up 48 to Clemson in the second half. And again, some of those fouls are weak. Some of those are they, they're not shooting fouls. They're fouls 80 feet from the basket, 90 feet from the basket. But they've already called so many other ticky tack fouls that they're in the one and one. And that's a good, pretty good free throw shooting team. And you gave them, you know, they outscored you by 18 at the free throw line. You lost by 10. That's that's a big, that's a big deal. Um, but I, I am, I'm interested to see what he's going to do with Balsa um, and what he's going to do. Just switching one through five if he goes small, or if he switches one through four and they fight around screens. Whatever, whatever they're going to try to do, it's going to be interesting because they haven't had to do this in a while. But they're not, they're not great defensively right now. All right, let's see some uh, news and notes since the last time we rendezvous. This actually did happen uh, before uh, our last show. I forgot to bring it up, though, but shout-out to Berto. Roberto Aguayo back in the league. Uh, Is he really? I didn't know that. He's on practice squad with the Patriots, but, you know, hey. Oh. You know, it's not, not a bad place to be. Not bad did he play on Monday night? I guess not if he's on the practice squad. Yeah, no, no. But, uh, yeah, he was picked up, like, over the weekend, put on the P squad. But uh, Okay. So I didn't good. even know he was still kicking. Good yeah, for him. Man. I mean, literally and figuratively, he is still kicking. Yeah. Uh, don't know what Ricky's up to these days. But uh, also, uh, what do you think about Dante Lucas? He's come back. So it seemed like maybe there was a, there was a moment there where it seemed like maybe he was going to, to leave. I don't know if he's going to be asked to leave or he was going to leave. But uh, that sort of smoke has subsided. Dante Lucas uh, sounds like he's coming back. Good lift for the Knowles. Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Okay. All right, cool. You know, All I'm right. not. I, you know, it is, you know, I, I, he, he's had some nice moments, I guess. He has not been nearly as good as I thought he was going to be, but he was also still just a second year player. He's a true sophomore. So, um, and had some uh, maturity issues, it seemed like. And uh, maybe he's gotten past those, and uh, maybe he'll be a team captain and be one of the uh, more important players on the team moving forward. Like Dwayne Haskins, captain? Probably, hopefully, different than that. Okay. Holy moly, with that guy, huh? Seriously. Well, I think I mean, he can't, is he going to is he going to get picked up? I no, guess he, he will. He, he cleared waivers because if they would have picked him up, if anybody would have picked him up, they would have had to take like the, the next two years of his contract, which was going to be uh, a pretty substantial sum of money because everything's backloaded. Uh, so now he's like an uh, unrestricted free agent. So my favorite story in the last 20 since we've talked and it's not um, th- 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 it's not sports related or political related is the Alec Baldwin wife <laughs> thing. <laughs> My is, friend is hilarious. What? So, uh, I guess summary. Apparently, his wife has propagated some sort of myth that she's of Hispanic descent and Correct. is a, a native Spanish speaker. Yes, and this is kind his of wife. Is she she would even talk with an accent. Okay, and she grew up in uh, Boston. Okay, her whole life. Her parent. Her mom was a. Uh, I think she was. I can't remember. She was a doctor. She had a good job, but in Boston. And I think they would spend maybe summers in Spain, but okay. you know her name is Hillary, but she changed it to Hilaria. Nice. And nice. and uh and she would talk sometimes. And I mean, there's a there's a thousand clips of her speaking in sort of like a broken English Spanish accent. And she grew up in like, uh, you know, Amherst, Massachusetts. So it's pretty awesome. It's just and she changed her name to Hilaria. And everybody on this, once it became a big deal, like a couple of days ago, there were all these people that went to school with her. It's like, no, her name's Hillary. It was always Hillary. <laughs> Nobody called her Hillaria. She's Hillary. Um, like but, Hillary Thomas. But did he know? Like, That's I, the thing. I don't know. How would you not know? That's my thing. My, my, my buddy's trying. He's like, no, he didn't know. I'm like, how, is he, how, how can you live with how, – how can you propagate a lie that long right under someone's nose? Yeah, they have five children together, and they're all named like Tomas – 
in Alberto. <laughs> I mean, they really are. It's the best. It's Stop awesome. It. So I think it would be great if he didn't know. Uh, but I, I he, they, she must have come clean at some point. She had to, right? Like because there, there are all these inter- there are interviews where she'll come in and out of an American accent. She'll have it and then she'll lose it and then she'll have it again. So she had to do that with him, like. Uh, so go just, park it, the car, Alec. I don't know what you're yeah, do yeah, dinner, though, sudden, you do for dinner, Yeah, she's got this deep, that awful Boston accent. That would be awesome. But yeah, that's just it. Just that thing is the most hilarious thing. Um, and then you, know, of course, Alec so Baldwin. And, what's the blowback right now? Then, like, is is he under siege? Is she under siege for like? No, a, she is. And then, of course, creating something. Of course, she gets on and, and tries to explain it, which she can't. And Alec Baldwin, you know, gets on Twitter and is like, there's so many more important things going on in this country. <laughs> and all the hounds are out. All the Twitter hounds are out and cancel culture's out. It's like, no, man, this woman lied for 10 years and said she was Spanish and she pronounced it Boston instead of Boston. <laughs> and, and, and she's from she's from Massachusetts. It's just funny. I don't I hope nobody's trying to, like, say she's not allowed in the country. It's just that it's funny. It's just it's it's humorous. So I just thought that that was that was my favorite story of the last forty eight hours. Dante Lucas graded out thirty third out of thirty seven wow. players uh, on Florida State's team. I got second oh lowest boy. starter Keyshawn was thirty. Oh, actually, him and Keyshawn both tied for thirty third uh, with starter reps. You know, having you know over two hundred or so reps. Did he was he good in anything? Like was he a good run blocker? No, no, he was uh, forty eight point seven overall. 57.5 on the pass block, 52.1 on the run block with uh, eight penalties. Well, the eight penalties, I think, really hurts you. Who was second on the team in penalties? He had eight. Well, I don't know. I can't look at uh, – but offensively, Cam McDonald had six. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's good. And they're both coming back, right? That's right, they man. They both announced they're coming back. Well, um, Cam McDonald did a nice three-minute video opus. Yeah. Uh, to announce his return. Um, which, How did Dante announce his? Uh, he tweeted it. Just kind of like, I, I want to be here. I want to be part of it. Or something like that, I think. Uh, five penalties of Sante. Uh, most penalized defensive player. But yeah, so uh, Dante, your most penalized player, period. Eight penalties is a lot. Gonna yeah. have to gonna have to nip that narrow that down. Eh, less that than down one a, a game. Less year. than one a game. It'll be so demanding. It'll be so true. Demanding. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So you know, I, I have a I have a weird relationship with Dante because I do think he's got like that nasty mean streak, and he's ob- he's obviously well, as strong it. as a bull. I We've saw seen it. it. Yeah. He baptized but, the kid at a camp. He <laughs> swung on the well. The guy swung on him first, but then Dante put the kid uh, in his place. Yeah, but but why not? Why isn't that translating to even being a average offensive lineman? Because yeah. I think the the skills are there, right? I, I think. I mean, I know the strength is there. Maybe he's not as quick as we thought. It's always hard. He seems to like he's got good footwork. Lineman. Like, yeah, he he seems to move fine. Like, that's what I think. To, that's yeah. what it looks like. But it's just it's not it's not all coming together. Now he's playing. He's starting. He's not Warren Thompson. Like he's actually on the field. Um, I don't want to. So he's not a bust. But he just hasn't been. Um, the, I thought he could be the guy that would be the ringleader of the offensive line, and they'd all start. He'd be the one that leads them. Yeah, and it's just he's actually been he at least this past season he was the worst one they had that played, yeah. and uh, that played. I I need to clarify that because they have plenty of bat, guys that can't get on the field, but out of the guys that played and started, he was the worst one. And and I just you, is he going to take that next step? Because it's you know I know he's only he's a sophomore, just like I said. Uh, and he'll be a sophomore again this year coming up. But, you know, he's had 20 starts or whatever it is. So will he take that next step going into next season and um, and become a – because I thought, I thought you were looking like an all-conference caliber guy. I really did. I mean, he was talked up that much. You watched his highlights, and I know it's really hard to evaluate offensive linemen because of who they're playing in high school. Uh, there's just such a strength and size advantage. But I, I just – I thought he had all the makings of being um, – a really good college offensive lineman. And so far it just hasn't, it hasn't happened. Uh, yeah. Plenty of time though. Plenty of time. Uh, well, for, it's always good to have experience too, right? Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. I mean, I think it's a good for, I don't, I'm not trying to uh, poo poo it. Mm. It's good. It's good for the team to get a guy. If he's into it, he wants to be here, which apparently he does. It, it is good for the team that, it, that, it, that he's coming back. You've got 15, 17, 19 starts, whatever he has coming back under his belt. That'll only make that group better whether somebody beats him out or not, 
they'll have to beat out a guy that started 20 games and was a five-star recruit uh, or high four-star recruit, whatever it ended up being. Certainly the the most touted recruit in that position room. So, you know, hopefully it works out. It's better than the alternative. How big of a problem is the wide receiver position? And are we talking about it because we're almost fatigued and exhausted about talking about the offensive line or linebacker being a problem or pass rush being a problem? Like, Are we just kind of at the point of the talking about a team struggling uh, crisis management playbook where it's like, all right, well, let's, let's talk about this thing right now. No, I mean, I think it's, it was a, it was certainly a big problem this year um, for sure. Like you, again, I bring it up all the time, but how many extra yards did they get? How many, how many just athletic yards did they get that weren't just coached up and schemed up? They didn't, they didn't get a ton of them. They didn't have guys making great plays. The Warren Thompson play was pro- was probably the best catch of the season uh, because that wasn't a, a great throw, but he went and made a play for that touchdown. Other than that, they didn't make a lot of plays that weren't, that, that kind of made you, you know, that, that were, that wowed you. You didn't, they didn't have any of that. And I just think for this offense to click and be a great offense, not just an okay, it wasn't even good this year, but I think it will be good next year, but to be great, it has to have dudes that can go win on one, one-on-one battles and be mismatches. At Florida State, you sh- anytime you get man-to-man coverage, that should be an automatic first down. You're, you're recruiting the state of Florida. You have all these athletes. You, typically, I'm talking about. You've got to find guys that can go make plays and also turn a seven-yard play into a 25-yard play, and they just haven't had that. I think, it's a, I think it's a big problem, but I think it's a problem that can be fixed. Hopefully, you, we get some news here. If, if Norvell unwraps a couple more presents... And get some news about people transferring in. They might, uh, uh, they, they should be better in that room next year. You hope. Does Georgia have wide receivers that if they're in man coverage as a first down all the time? Uh, they got a couple of them. Yeah, they got the Pickens kid. Yeah, he's good. Um, and they got the oh, I can't, I can't, forget, I can't remember the other guy's name. But yeah, they do. They have a, they have a Pickens. Heinz Ward. And Heinz Ward. Yeah, he's he was good. And I tell you, I, li- I really like Robert Edwards at tailback. Oh yeah, I like what he's he's got some. Uh, he, he just got some juice to him. Uh, Fred Gibson, too. Remember the great Fred Gibson? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Uh, Ware County's finest. Um, but, yeah, so because you're going to have a good quarterback. I don't know who it's going to be, but you're going to be set at quarterback, and I think you're going to have good enough running backs and a good offensive line. If you, and also this, too, man. What do we expect the defense to be next year? Not great, right? Yeah, yeah. So – Norvell and Dillingham can put together a great scheme. The quarterback can play well. The running backs can play well. The line can block great. If the receivers are below average, there is a limit to how good the offense can be. It, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what the number limit would be scoring wise. I don't know, 32 points a game. But isn't well, that there, where, if you're going to have a deficiency on that side of the ball, can't you live with it there? Or is it well or is better it than line? Back? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd ra- yeah. You'd rather be good on the, at offensive line for sure. Well, I mean, like so. I guess you could live with with below average running backs. So I guess like running back is the one that you probably could get away with being subpar. And it's weird, right? Like w- when we talk about below average, let's let's phrase it, frame it another way, like non NFL. Okay. You know what I mean? Like right. I don't. I wouldn't say that. I, I certainly wouldn't say Toa Feely and Corbin are below average. But let's say that you know. I'm not saying they are, but I'm just saying in terms of this exercise. Because look at the offense. We feel good about quarterback. We feel pretty good about running back. We feel yeah. pretty good about wide uh, offensive line, wide receiver. And we don't in, know really. all that much. Yeah, and actually, I don't even. I don't care about the three back. Whatever. Wake me up when that becomes a thing. I don't know. It just uh, the what? Just, what did you say? Wake me up when we wake me up. Um, tight end. Like oh. we we keep seeing. You know, Bo Relaford was going to be a freak, and then you know uh, <laughs> Ryan Izzo was going to be like uh, baby Gronk, and then Trey McKitty came from IMG and was going to be crazy, and then. Cam McDonald, West Coast Knoll, and yeah, man, wake me up when somebody. You don't have to be Nick O'Leary, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to worry at all about what you get from your three back, H back. I know, and that's supposedly like a big thing in Norvell's offense, but that offense did its best stuff when, you know, they were running tight ends. You know, the the, the walk on was going down the seam on like a really delayed RPO and, and that kind of stuff. Like there's. They're, they're, none of these guys are – K. McDonald is not matchup nightmare that you would think he would be. 
which no, is fine. No, but he, he's, I mean, he's, he's not enough. bad. Yeah, he's good he's enough. not bad. Yeah, he's yeah. good enough. Good enough. Yeah. But, like, he's not a, He's not like a wild card X Factor thing. I, I think I put him really super high on my preseason top 40. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, someone else going to have to catch passes besides Terry. Maybe it's Pokey, but maybe Cam McDonald goes crazy. But, anyhow, back to the, to the exercise. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, that's. I just. I remember. I saw somebody post on the the tribal council about. Wow, look at Oklahoma State. Look at all these wide receivers they're running out there. If we had them, uh, you know, we'd be on a rocket ship to the moon. And I'm like, well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt. Don't get me wrong. But I just think that's if if we're going to go into you know twenty or twenty twenty one, not being where we want to be at wide receiver. Like I can live with that. And I don't know how much sort of. Uh, you know, excuse making I'll make for like, well, you know, they don't have the greatest wide receivers. I just feel like you can still we see what Alabama's doing. And I think that's what just just kills everybody is just seeing the fact that they had Ruggs, Judy, Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle. And you're like, well, can we just get one? Can we just have one of those guys, please? Yeah. Uh, and then Clemson with Amari Rogers and T Higgins before that and Justin Ross before that and et cetera, et cetera. Well, in Florida had Pitts, and Florida had Tony. Yeah. Um, look, but I'm I'm just saying I think there's a, if you don't have difference makers out wide, I think there's a ceiling to this offense because he had them at Memphis. He had guys that he had the one guy that had 90 catches, right? Yeah. And then he had uh, what's his name, Antonio Gibson. Yeah. He had guys that just made plays out wide that were matchup problems, and other than Terry, he didn't have that this year. And Terry had for one game essentially. Um, so you you just Moving forward, you you've got to get better there. But yeah, I don't I don't think wide receiver is nearly the issue that defensive end is. Right. Right. You know, I, I think that's probably the most important position on the on the defense for this particular team is defensive end. And uh yeah, I mean I I think wide receiver is probably the weakest position, especially in relation to Florida State, um, on the on the entire on the offense. But uh yeah, I don't you know, I think you could live if you could get some like the kid from Kansas. I don't know that he's an NFL guy, but he makes you better. And maybe these other guys take steps. Maybe they become players. Maybe Brian Robinson is a player and Williamson is a player. And we just didn't get to see it this year for whatever reason, injuries or whatnot. Um, but yeah, they've got to they've got to be better out there. Or or the ceiling is like what I said, it's like thirty one a game. But you've got to ceiling. have a guy that goes and steals you a touchdown because he's just good. Or he just goes and makes some plays and and beats man coverage. Because this kid's going to throw it. If Milton's the quarterback, which, again, he's not coming to sit, if he's the quarterback, he's going to give you a chance. He's going to throw it. He's going to see the one-on-one matchup, and he's going to get rid of it. You have to go make a play. How much of it, though, you know, is like a quarterback having the confidence to throw it to a guy who's covered but still not forcing it, you know? That's, that's kind of my the rub, I think, with Jordan. I think Jordan sees the field pretty good. He sees guys running wide open, which is an upgrade over his predecessor. But, like, it's just not going to happen against Clemson. It's not going to happen against Notre Dame. I mean, it happened against North Carolina uh, where guys got schemed completely wide open. But, like, and I'm not trying to do the whole you got to make, uh, you know, throw in tight windows. But there's there's times where, like, you know, put it out there. Give your, give your receiver the chance to make the play. I just don't know how many times we even saw those throws being made where, where they tried to give the player – uh, the ability to make a play downfield, try to get the pass interference called, try to make the big catch. Like it even seemed like there was, unless it was something wide open, which like that's not a that big of a criticism. Like you know, be safe, be safe with the ball, I guess. But at a certain point, you realize that that defense, you weren't going to win by just playing conservative football. I think a guy like Mackenzie Milton, who probably has a better feel for being a throwing quarterback, like maybe you will make more of those throws, and maybe Pokey will make a couple of those catches. Maybe yeah, I mean, there, there is a chance there is a chance that Pokey and Helton uh, have nice years and are, are actual weapons. Um, they've they've had individual plays and moments where you're like, okay, that's a that's a big time play. He's really fast or he's really shifty, but it just hasn't uh, been consistent enough. Right. But again, it's all yeah, like you said, we're not watching the all twenty two. We don't know how many times they're winning a battle and it's not coming to them. Um, and that's that's because you know, look, they had a, a bad quarterback to start the season. And then they had a guy that hadn't played much after that. Um, you know, Jordan Jordan has a nice arm. We, nobody doubts that. He can he can make throws. It's just as he throwing it on time, is he anticipating and throwing it on time when these guys are coming out of their breaks? I, I don't know. I'm not saying he's not because we don't watch the all twenty two. Maybe he look. Maybe he pauses in the pocket because there's nobody open. 
That's certainly a possibility. Either way, I think there's a they it's uh, they work together. There's uh, symmetry there where um, it's there's probably fault on both. But either way, nobody could argue obviously that these run, these receivers were any good because they weren't. But they're also mostly young, so we give them the benefit of the doubt. We hope they get better. Um, and next year it's going to be an air show. It's just going to be an air raid. They're going to be sounding the sirens after every touchdown. Yeah, there you go. Like Ray Pereira. There we go. There we go. We'll have a live show later tonight, by the way. But first, Corey, what'd you have for dinner the other night? Let me tell you, Aslan. Let me get it up because I want to get the I want to get the uh, the the description exactly right. Okay, so I had so Stephanie's up here, and she made us. Uh, we I got three things sent to me by HelloFresh. She made it was more like a taste test thing, so we did two of them. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We went with number one. We went with the the Tuscan chicken pasta with roasted tomatoes and garlic. Oh. That sounds something like I would whip up, right? Absolutely. Like Brady, they, they give me about twenty minutes. I got. I got to get that. I got to get you my your Tuscan chicken pasta. It was really good. It had kiwi in it too. What? Like it was a lot. Like I saw her on the chopping board, and it was like five different ingredients she was throwing in there. Okay. Sweet, salty savory it was all in there all the taste buds were firing all right. on all cylinders and then also uh stay with me on this one too we had the teriyaki pork luau bowl with salsa fresca and lime garlic and cream sauce see they did listen to me i'm like i can't do the pork so they got everything for everybody oh i was wrong though by the way since i ate both of them i forgot the the pork luau bowl is the one with the kiwi in it. Okay, I was about to say that sounds a little all right. Yeah, that was the one with the sweetness in there. Man, they were. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not lying to you, folks. Just because they're a sponsor, I probably would, but I'm not lying to you. It was genuinely really good, and Brady liked it too. Stephanie loved it. Brady liked it. It was good for a 12 year old's palate. It was good for a not 12 year old's palate. I'm not going to say how old Stephanie is. That's not the nice thing to do. And I really liked it. It was really good. It was like a. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't quite know what HelloFresh was before this whole thing started. But they're know. like real meals. They they, they they ship you like really good ingredients. It's America's number one meal kit, core. They do. It's great. It's all like it's all self-contained in one bag. You just pull that out of the fridge. Like, all right, today we're going to have uh, coconut milk chicken curry. Who's yeah. in? Who does that? Who? When, when have I ever told Brady, hey, man, you, and, you want a little... Uh, Pork luau bowl? You want a little teriyaki pork luau bowl with salsa fresca going and lime to, green garlic sauce? Going to 2021 with the dub. Hello Fresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. They offer the flexibility that you'll need with customizable orders every week. And you can change your delivery days or your food preferences and you can skip a week or whenever you want so you're not tied into anything uh, that you don't want to be into. So go on to the website. HelloFresh.com forward slash wake up 10. Use the promo code wake up 10. Gets you 10 free meals and free shipping. Again, HelloFresh.com forward slash wake up 10. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, Corey. So if Jordan Travis can make all the throws, then why do we have Mackenzie Milton? Come on, man. We can't do this we for the next this? eight months. Okay. All right. We can't do this for the next eight months. Well, it's going to be a fun. You know, again, I, I'm coming back to my idea, man. So the another bowl was canceled, right? Yeah, the so Arcan- we're at one and a half worth the worth the. You're still you're, you're sitting nice in the over. It was Arkansas and who? TCU. It was a Texas Bowl. What now? Why can't those two teams? Let's let's say we're in a different place in, as a country in four months, which oh, sweet Moses, we better be. But four or five months from now, we're in a different place. People can go out, and there's not as much risk because you know, 260 million of us have been vaccinated. Let's go, government. Let's get make it happen. But why wouldn't the Texas Bowl then say, you know what, we're moving it to April. And the two teams that we had on board to play in December, they're going to play essentially what amounts to their spring game in April here. And we'll give them the bowl trip here. Why can't we do that? So like at the end of spring practice, instead of playing like... Instead, your- of, Ar- instead of the pig suey game or whatever they call the Arkansas spring game. Right. You instead of doing that where you're playing each other and it's nonsense, your bowls are exhibitions anyway. Every other day, nine other kids opt out of these things. So one kid, the Oklahoma State kid, opted out at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what in the world? What was that even about? What was that conversation like? <laughs> hey, man, they're hitting pretty hard. The sideline reporter even said, like, oh, in case you're wondering why he's not back in the game, it's a personal decision. And Dave O'Brien is on the call. Is like, 
wow, I'd really love to hear the explanation on that one. And it's like, yeah, what does that mean? It's a personal decision. Did he say, like, I'm giving you a half, Gundy? Yeah, exactly. You get one more half to watch to watch me shine. So you better take advantage. I mean, it's just nuts. These bowls are ridiculous. Yeah, but, but then, you in, know, that said, then you see Derek King go down with an injury. And it's like, for what, man? For what? Well, that's what I'm saying. They're exhibitions anyway. Yeah. So treat them like exhibitions. And ha- but, but don't you think, like, it's like uh, basketball teams in the preseason. They'll play scrimmages. Mark Krikori, usually when they're not playing in the spring, um, I think they will be playing some in the spring this time, they'll do spring scrimmages against other teams, like other colleges. So why not at the end of your spring, at the end of Arkansas spring, and at the end of TCU spring, they meet up and play each other? And it's, it doesn't count, but bowls really, we're to the point now where bowls almost shouldn't count anyway unless you're playing for a championship. So, like, at least, I think, I think in, maybe just this year, but I think moving forward, this might be the way. It makes, you're going to make money. You're telling me, like, if Florida State played, I don't know, Duke, a game they didn't get to play. So, or uh, Wake Forest. They're going to play them in the Gasparilla Bowl on April 30th. And everybody can come. Florida State will make more money at that than they would at their spring game. Right? I, I need to figure out a, like a Don't a you rebuttal, think there'd be 40,000 people yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And there's no real risk because it doesn't count. If you don't want to, if you don't want your quarterbacks to get hit, I guess both teams could say they're in a green jersey. That would be a little odd. Oh uh, yeah, no one's gonna want it. But who's gonna want to sponsor that? Who's gonna want to be the you know the Gasparilla man? It's better not have anything at all. The Texas Bowl. Yeah. Texas Bowl will be like, hey, at least we get something. But I, I just think that like maybe in this year, but I think even even moving forward, they're gonna have to figure out something with these bowls because they're becoming uh, you know mockeries yeah. of college football games. A kid left. A kid opted out <laughs> at halftime. <laughs> I mean, but in the spring game, you know, there's excitement. There's, you get to see, you, you know, it doesn't count. It doesn't count against your record, which is fine. I, should that, should, you know, should, oh, I mean, I don't know. Should these bowl games now, the way they're currently constructed count? Probably not, especially this year. But even still, you you get, you get a TCU and an Arkansas, and instead of beating up on each other, they beat up on another team, make it a running clock in the second half. You get to play against another team. It's like the NFL teams that have their scrimmages against each other. In the preseason, oh, there's there were there's some that Liberty Coastal Carolina was a good bowl game. I hate to see that devolve into some April jamboree. That uh, feels like the only one that anybody's cared about, though, right? And it's because of those two teams. Like they do care, yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, because they were it was a big deal to both those teams. By the way, did we even talk about that? No, we didn't talk about. Did freeze? I mean that that was no. He did I everything can't... right. He did everything right. If that was my coach, I would not be upset. That was just I don't, I don't know. There's, who do you blame? I guess you blame the tight end for trying to push the guy into the... No, I, I man, I think if you watch that, because the tight end sees... Uh, I thought the other team was... Real, Coastal Carolina was really well coached. Yeah. Like, pull him into the end zone. Yeah. So they grab him and start pulling him into the end zone. I think the tight end wraps his hands around his waist and tries to pull him back. Yeah. yeah. And that's when the... I don't think he was pushing. I think he was trying to pull him back and he stripped the ball out. Yeah. But why did the running back even get towards the... Why did he even move forward? He did the, the – on first down, he did it perfectly. So, for the people that don't know, but why wouldn't you? I mean, it's Coastal Carolina and Liberty. What are you doing well, on a Friday night that you're not watching it, that yeah. game? Yeah. Um, that, so, there was a tie game, I, I think, or may, whatever. Liberty was driving. They were at the three-yard line first and goal in a tie game, well, obviously, within field goal range. It's a chip shot. So, but Liber, uh, Coastal Carolina has no timeouts, and Liberty doesn't want to score too quickly. So instead of taking a knee and setting up for the field goal, they call a run to the running back out of the shotgun, and he basically just stands there and squats until they get close, and then he goes down. And 40 seconds run off the clock. So now you're down to like 48 seconds, 43 seconds, 50 seconds when the ball is snapped. They give it to him again. He kind of clutches it and starts slowly tiptoeing towards the line, well, but he gets, a, he he gets close to enough to the defenders. Up. He was trying to center it up, too. Like, when he went down first time, he was on left hash. So the second time, I think he was trying to center it up to take all, right. you know, make it an absolute cakewalk chip shot. So they, but he got too close to the defenders, who then, because they're smart, grabbed him and, like, let's pull him into the end zone because they wanted the chance to go down the field and, and have a chance with 45 seconds left. They didn't want them to run it down and kick a field goal on the last play of the game and win the game. So they want at least a chance. So they're trying to pull him into the end zone. 
his tight end comes from behind and I think tries to pull him back and he strips so many fumbles. Um, and they recover. They go to overtime. Liberty still wins. I loved the idea of both coaches. Yeah. Like it's the coastal Carolina is very well coached to tell them, yeah, pull him into the end zone. If he, if he does that again. Um, and I love free saying, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to kick now. a field goal yeah. right now and I'm not going to score a touchdown. Yeah. That would be idiotic. You know, like the Falcons did <laughs> flipping girly. Even after Matt Ryan says, Hey man, do whatever you do. Don't score a touchdown. You got it, man. Oh, I'm in the end zone. It just ridiculous. But uh, uh, that's a great image, by the way. Have you seen that shot? I know it was two months ago now. But Gurley's, Gurley's reaching over the, the, uh, the end zone, yeah. and the Lions defenders are both throwing their hands up like touchdown. <laughs> I've never seen that. Like they're trying to signal touchdown for the Falcon because they knew how dumb it was, and of course the Falcons lost that game. But uh, the, the only dumb part was if you're, if you're going to do that, take a knee. Or what I would have done is told the running back to score on second down. You know, it's it's think about how different it is from if he scores on first down, Coastal Carolina gets the ball back with a minute 18 left. That's plenty of time in college football. But if he would have scored on that second down play, there's 40 seconds left and no timeouts and you're up by seven. I would have no problem with that, right? You did what you had to do. You ran 40 seconds off the clock. So now it's going to take a miracle to lose. And you also got in the end zone. So a, a field goal can't tie. And you can't and you don't you don't leave it up to a college kicker. Well, look what happened with the Raiders and the Dolphins, man. Right, like 14 seconds, like 25-yard yeah, line, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. And then was, you uh, throw a bomb, yeah. face mask, that chip was, shot. That was, a Ra- that was a Raiders play. Good for the Dolphins, though, right? Yeah, yeah. And we're rooting for – by the way, we need good thoughts sent this way. Uh, Stephanie's team, the Cleveland Browns, oh. um, they have not been in the playoffs since I've known her, obviously. <laughs> they haven't been in the playoffs since I had a kid. They haven't been in the playoffs since Chris Ricks was the quarterback at Florida State. I oh, think yeah, it's it literally like, been like, it like 17 Kelly, years. It was like Kelly Holcomb. Kelly Holcomb, Butch Davis, I think, were uh, running the Is show. Is that right? Cleveland. Yeah. I remember Butch that Butch Davis yeah. was their coach? Yeah, they played uh, the Steelers, actually, too, I want to say, in the playoff, like a wild card game. So they got they have to beat the Steelers this weekend. The Steelers are not playing Roethlisberger. Um, they're probably going to sit a couple other guys down. So you got to hope one time. The Browns will will win this game and get into the playoffs. Now, look, they're going to lose the first round. Or All they had to do was sure. beat the Jets last weekend. They couldn't do that. Well, because they didn't have any receivers. That's because right. of this crazy year, they legitimately he was throwing to guys he had never thrown to before. So that was a bit of, that was a bit of a bummer. I felt bad for her there, um, and I was happy that the Falcons lost the way they did. That was perfect. I think the Rams are maybe going to play a quarterback from the CFL. I mean, because golf's gone. You know what I'm saying? Like there. I just. G- genuinely, and we can complain about the defense, and we can complain about the wide receivers, or the basketball team not playing well at Clemson, but it is such a bizarre, goofy year. It is one giant asterisk around everything. That doesn't mean you shouldn't care. You should care. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter. I get that it does, but it is a goofy, goofy season. Feels like we're in a simulation. It doesn't it even ca- feel like you know, real and it, and it just football. it's like okay. It's you know, it's it's like are are the are uh, teams that fans that actually have a team in a bowl game, are y'all upset that they didn't win if they had nine guys that didn't play? You know, it's just this isn't this isn't normal. Hopefully, it never becomes the new normal, and we get out of this. That our nightmare will be over in a few months. But I just enjoy that we're getting to watch it at all, and that's kind of how I watch that Florida State basketball game. It's like yeah, man, I just I like watching Scotty Barnes. I like teams trying. I like, I, I just, I like all of it. I just like to see competition, even in a, uh, an awkward scenario like this has been, um, with all these sports. It's just, but I'm talking about the Braves. I'm talking about college football. I'm talking about having a, a national championship college football game where there'll be like a 12,000 people in the stands. It's all bizarre and it's all wacky, but I, it's, it's cool that we still get to watch it because Ben, in April, I didn't think we were going to get to watch any of this. That's why I like uh, – I mean, I know this season, obviously, everything you just said. I, that's why I kind of want to still see the Bulls remain the way they are because usually when there's everybody's playing in these games, it is, it is like another two and a half weeks of awesomeness. And there's just all these bowl games all the time. And I know people opt out, but they're usually pretty competitive. And so much of it, too, for me, football is – like I, I don't have any vices in my life. Like knock on wood, I don't have like an addictive personality on anything. I'm pretty good. There's things that I shouldn't like in life that I do enjoy, but I know not to indulge in them. So much of football for me is the fact that like 
it's the best thing ever, but, man, we only get it for, like, that four months. That's it. They can try these spring leagues. They can try XFL. It's, it might be kind of cool watching some of these FCS teams play games in March and April. I'll, I'll watch it. I don't know how dialed into it. How cool would it be to see TCU and Arkansas play in April? I don't know, but I don't want to do that. Like, Are I, you kidding? I, need, I, need, you I kidding? want to wait. We got, robbed. we got robbed at the Texas Bowl. I need the withdrawals. I need the withdrawals. I need it so that I'm, I'm so psyched for it. Like if football really was year-round, I think, and I know they, they've tried to make with free agency and the multiple signing days and what the way that you have to cover a college football program is that you're covering spring football like it's almost the regular. I mean, we've made it into a, a year-long thing, but still, man, the games, the games, not the practice, the games. Right. I just want like that, that four-month window, and then we go and we just, that's a long wait, and our heart harkens for it. And there's something about that. Uh, that what makes football, I think, so much more special than like all the other sports, and that's why it's given its uh, its superiority in this country, man. I just think that we've learned to kind of appreciate not having it at times, and then instead of like like a, like baseball, man, God, you, you're around NASCAR. I can't believe NASCAR got popular for a while. God love them. There's like a, a really important person in NASCAR that's, a, that's an alum of Florida State. Shout out, but man, I feel like there's a time where like NASCAR would go ten months of the year. Like, come on, man, let me let me miss you for a little bit, you know. Yeah, I just again, I I wanted to see the Texas Bowl. I'm bummed that I didn't get to see. Well, three we can see the Alamo Arkansas. Bowl if we wrap up because it's halftime right now as we record this. Good news on uh, your enemies getting weaker. Everybody from Florida apparently is leaving. Uh, I, I Kyle Pitts is already gone. Uh, Kadarius Tony's opted out of the bowl game. He's going pro. Uh, Travon Grimes has opted out of the bowl. He's going pro. Hopefully, this has means Trask oh, well, announced yet? No, but I think he's. He's the boy scout of the bunch. He's he's indebted to Dan Mullen for making him who he is. I don't think he's going to back out on him, um, and, and he's going to. But play he's a game. is he a? I mean, he's a pro prospect, yeah, right? I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, he's I good. Um. So yeah, I mean, look, that's what I was saying. Like, I, I think that uh, Florida is certainly head head and shoulders and and the whole torso ahead of Florida State right now. Uh, but they do lose a lot of dudes that won them some games. Like you saw what they were before Kyle Trask. That Tony guy is um, scary too, man. The Tony guy, I mean, wow. That guy was legit. It's crazy how good he was. And Pitts obviously was probably the most talented guy on the team. And all these guys were McIlwain dudes. These are guys, these are all guys that Jim McIlwain recruited. It's crazy. Yeah. The, it's what, crazy. Where's he, what's he doing now? Where where is he? Is it Central Michigan? Mich- Western Michigan? He's in one of those Michigan directional schools. Back oh, so saddle. he's not close to an ocean where he can hop on a charter boat <laughs> hey, hey, go on. deep sea, deep sea humping. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so hopefully I don't know. Uh, hopefully Mullen doesn't have the recruiting touch. Although he's just, he's just that that Emory Jones kid's going to be a pain in the rear. He just he's not, always gonna, yeah, he's, he's, he's good. always going to have a productive quarterback. Yeah, but I mean, I the what Trask did was a, a remarkable. Like yeah. that that was almost like Burrow esque. How good he was, yeah. and he wasn't throwing. Now I know he had pits. He had pits for every game though. No. Um, but he wasn't throwing to like four first round picks either. No, um, I mean he was he was uh, really good. He might have gotten one of my three places in my Heisman vote. How are you gonna just vote throwing for a that out there? How are you gonna vote for a Gator, man? Hey, I did. He's the first one I've ever voted for, and I didn't. Let's just say that I can't say anymore. I can't say anymore, yeah, guys. Come on, don't lose just your know that uh, the integrity. Yeah, the just goal. know you. If you guys listen to me enough or follow me on Twitter. I feel like you know who I probably voted for for the Heisman, but I'm not. I'm not going to say it till when is that? By the way, when is that announcement? Is that at halftime of the of one of the playoff games? I don't know. But, I should. You have a vote. How don't you? Know, how do you not know? Is it sa- is it coming up Saturday? I would is think it like, so. It's always. Yeah, I know, but it's going to be so. They're going to have the Heisman ceremony after a playoff game. What a crazy year, man! Maybe Why not announce between, it at halftime? Maybe have it between the uh, the two games or whatever. 7 p.m. Tuesday, January 5th. Ew. It's on a Tuesday. What? <laughs> Excuse me? It's on a Tuesday, man. The Heisman's being given out on a Tuesday. Let's just chalk up this year to a mulligan. We had fun. We got to watch some sports. We got to talk about sports. We got to, uh, you know, en- enjoy it on our TV for the last three or four months after what was an awful summer. And uh, just let's let's just have fun with it, and next year is going to be back to normal. It's going to be real sports again. It's going to be virtual. So did they mail one out to everybody so that they can actually hold it up when they announce their name virtually, or they're not actually going to be able to touch the trophy on the day they win it? 
That's like yeah, uh, man, that's can't, a... not being able to cuddle with the the significant other out on the wedding night. Like you can't even have the trophy. Like come on. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, they can't. I mean, I guess they could bail it out to all the finalists and then be like, "All right, we're gonna need those back." I get like a replica. Yeah, I get like a replica, not the actual one. You know, I'm trying. I'm yeah, but then you the know, Kyle releases. Trask gets to have a. Uh, he can tell people on the high. Hey, this is a real Heisman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know how they do that. That's a. That's. A, it's all gonna be really. Uh, it's all gonna be different. It's all gonna be uh, something to watch. All right. uh, call it, Corey. What time you want to do the live show here on Wednesday? Let's do. How about we do 6 o'clock? 6 p.m. Eastern time, live show, last one of the year. We're going to bring in the new year. Everybody beware, or I guess we don't get to see you, but we're going to wear our New Year's uh, hats, kazoos. Now I have to go out to a store and go buy a kazoo. No, we don't have to do that, I guess, because I don't have those either. I'm just, uh, so, no, we're not going to do that, but it's our, it's our end of the year spectacular. Yeah. Be there, everybody. 6 p.m. live on YouTube. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. We'll see you live, 6 p.m. on YouTube, and it will be your podcast on Thursday. He's Corey Maslow. Thanks for listening to Wake Up War Champ, presented by Zaxby's. Love you, Zaxby's. You're so good. I wish I could describe you, but I can't. But I love you. We'll be back later, tomorrow. Today, I don't know. Bye. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. Warchant.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.